next step in uh, data processing is support structure generation so in data processing of a uh, for additive manufacturing process we follow eight sequential steps so in that uh, the previous lecture we did discuss about part g in this lecture we are going to discuss about support structure generation what is support structure and what are the different types of support structure available uh, pros and cons of the support structure and within the support structure what are the different gradient levels available what is the need of support structure why do you require a support structure for additive manufacturing compound this topic we will uh, discuss in this session so if you uh, take any printed component the printed component uh, after printing in as built condition you can see the support structure right so this support structure are generated as the model is oriented in this direction if if it is oriented at different direction you may have different volume of support a different shape of support so based on this orientation these are the supports which are generated in the in process so this support can be a removable or uh, it can be chemically dissolved or you can have a, a sparsely deposited support structure which you can easily break from the original model and uh, there is also concept called overhanging angle so this is a overhanging angle and as per our uh, uh, theory all downward facing surface should have a support right so all downward facing should have a support but if you look this case if you look this case you have a downward facing but this downward facing doesn't have a support so what it implies certain overhanging angle so this angle the angle between the surface and the table is called a overhanging angle so certain uh, degree of angle can be printed without support so this value generally lies between or it will lies around 45 degree if the surface is nearby 0 degree again you would require a support because uh, uh, it is completely facing downward if the support is also above 60 degree or above 70 degree again that requires a support so certain until certain angle you require a support and beyond that angle the printed component will get a support from the previous layer so this particular angle is called a overhanging angle so until that angle you require a support and beyond that angle it can uh, automatically support on its own so uh, that is uh, all about the overhanging feature of support if you look into the support material the support material can be of uh, three different region so there will be three distinct region inside the support if you look into this diagram the white color uh, patch is a model so this is your model so this model uh, is printed layer by layer if you look into the support region there are three different color white color gray and black so there are three different gradient region within a support so this uh, region are called needle support main support and separator support so within a support itself you have three different region and this will be uh, predominantly in most of the machines not in all additive manufacturing machine so there are three category of support structure so one is uh, separator separator is the purpose of separator is to remove the part from the table so you, though you may have a undercut feature or downward feature Uh, or you may not have the undercut or downward feature irrespective of a feature or irrespective of a orientation of your part always the separator support will be deposited so this is what we did discuss as brim and raft in software so this brim or raft is used to remove the part from the table so some sacrificial material is deposited between the table and the part so after printing you can easily remove the part from the table without much damage on part, part and table so separator support is respective of your complexity of the component the second support is main support main support is uh, used to support a downward facing surface for example this feature is facing downward so to uh, withstand you cannot directly deposit a layer so to withstand this layer the main support is created the third is needle so needle support is created between main and part so it will be like a needle like structure you can see a number of minor needles so this needle will act as the interface between support and part 
So after printing, since the contact area is very small because the support is connected with the part with a needle like structure. So the contact area between the support and the part is very small. With the less force, you can uh, remove the support from the part and it will also have less impact or impression onto the part. Suppose instead of needle, if you directly deposit a support until this region, after the removal of support, it will create some impression onto the surface. So to avoid that, the interface needle-like structure is created and this needle-like structure will help you to uh, remove the part easily from the support. So this is what you can see in this picture. So within the support, you can see multiple region. Some, some case it may be of same material or different material, but within the support, there are three type of region, separator support, main support and serial support. Now, this slide shows uh, interesting uh, characteristic of how, where you require a support structure. For example, if you take a first case, would you be able to see this slide support structure design? Would you be able to see this support structure design? Is it visible to everyone? Support structure design. Yes, sir. So if you look uh, in this figure, the first model will have only the path. There is no complex feature. But even in this case, you require a support. So the gray color region, which is between the path and the table is a support. This support is uh, meant for removing a part from the table. So uh, even you do not have any complex feature, you cannot print a path without support. Support is always required, at least to remove the part from the table. The second case, overhang angle. For example, it is a circular feature, an elliptical feature. Obviously, there will be support to remove the part from the table. Apart from that, you also have a uh, additional support for a downward facing. So this support is not deposited for the entire uh, edge until the edge it is not supported. So after a certain overhanging angle, it will get support on its own. So until the certain slope angle value, you require a support beyond the uh, angle. It will automatically, if suppose the slope angle is very high, then automatically from the previous layer, it will get a support. So in that case, you may not, may not create any support material. The third category is uh, completely downward facing. So it is uh, parallel to the table and the Though both surfaces are parallel, the surface is downward facing, so the support is created with a uh, separator material. The fourth case is similar to the first case. If you look into the first case and fourth case, in first case, you have a part and the support, but in fourth case, in order to reduce the material consumption, because if I make a complete cube in solid, it is going to consume a lot of material. So instead of that, to remove the material, to, uh, to decrease the material consumption, I'm going to create a CAD model with a shell thickness. So I'm not going to print a solid. If I, if I give a solid cube, then the machine will print a solid cube. If I give a shell cube with shell thickness, then it will print a hollow cube. So if you print a hollow cube, you will get a shape, but you may not get a better strength. If it is for prototype, you no need to worry about the strength. So that is another way in which you can reduce the cost of material consumption. But in this case, since the internal cavity is completely hollow, the material will be replaced with the support because this is downward facing. In cube, the top surface will get support from the previous surface. So this will be repeated until the base surface, layer by layer. But in this case, since it is made hollow, from this surface to this edge, there is no issue. When you are trying to complete the final shell thickness at the top, automatically the material deposited will fill down unless otherwise if there is any support it will get deposited on the top of the support so you may reduce the material consumption but this will increase the support material consumption so this you have to keep it in mind uh, you have advantage in additive manufacturing process you can make a solid component or a hollow component of same dimension uh, but only thing is if you print a hollow component make sure that the solid material is replaced with a support and you have to spend a cost for support and you should have a strategy to remove the support from the hollow feature. So that is very critical. Another case is L by D ratio. Though the component is very simple, 
if the length to diameter, for example, the length of the component is high when it is compared to the diameter of the component, then L by D ratio will be very high. So in that case, at the time of printing itself, the material start to buckle. So to avoid that, you require a support, additional support like a gusset. So this is a gusset support. So here the support is not meant for a downward facing or complex feature. It is just to avoid a buckling. Another case, as like I mentioned in the first case, you require a support uh, from the table and certain region you can avoid a support because the angle, overhang angle is beyond the required value. So this overhang angle, I cannot say universally, if you have a part with a greater than 27 degree, you do not require a support. So that I cannot uh, mention it universally because the support uh, requirement for material to material, it will be different. For machine to machine, it will be different. So there is no universal value. This particular value is a overhanging value where uh, overhang angle where you do not require a support. It depends on the machine as well as the process parameter what you are going to use. So to identify that you have to perform n number of trial and error experiment. So until which angle it, it requires support and beyond which angle it does not require a support. So that has to be identified. And in certain case, if you look into the bottom diagram, uh, projected feature like this is also an undercut which is facing down, but certain length can be printed without support also. Like uh, when we construct a ceiling, we require a support, but when you construct a sunshed, windows will have a sunshed. So the sunshed window will be projected for some length. Very, uh, the length is very less compared to the ceiling. So that length will get support from the part itself. So you do not require a support for certain length and certain thickness. Again, what is the length and what is the thickness? It depends on individual material and mission. Uh, we cannot tell universally. You have to try and uh, calculate what is the length and thickness I can print without support. But in metal based additive manufacturing process, you will be using a laser to join a powder particle. So though the particular thickness and length can be printed without support, in metal based pass, you require a support because this support will act as a sink for your thermal load. Because as you print a component layer by layer, the high power laser will come onto the layer. After solidification, you need some material to transfer the heat. So here the support material is used to transfer the heat. So support, especially in metal based additive manufacturing process is used for thermal as well as mechanical loading. What is mechanical loading? This downward facing surface. But though the surface can be printed without support, here the support is deposited for the purpose of thermal loading. So you need smooth transfer of heat for that purpose. This metal support will be created. So these are certain criteria in which you require a support material. Now let us see different types of designs available for support because when you work on a software, it will ask you whether you require a support or not. Then you have to define which type of support you require. So let us see some of the most commercially used design. Gazette. So if you look here, the black color region is your support. So in this case, the support is not printed from the table. Though the surface is facing downward, the support is not printed from the table. From the part itself, you can create a support. That is, from the part, you deposit additional material, and this deposited additional material will increase layer by layer. So this will act as a support for this downward facing. After printing, you can remove the black color region. So this type of design is called desert design. In Cura software, we have an option. I will show you at the end of this lecture. So you have a table. From the table, you have to create a support. Or in a certain case, from the part itself, you have to create a support. So in that case, you can avoid material consumed for the support from the table. So this is support from the part. In certain case, the support will be from the table. So this type of support is called gusset support. Projected support. So if you look here, this is a downward facing surface. So this surface can be printed without support. Again, you have to identify what is the length I can print without support. You have to print a part with a, a multiple cap value and check until which uh, length you can print a part without support. So 
this surface will get a support from the adjacent surface which is printed layer by layer from the table. So in that case, you required support only to separate a path from the table. So the black color region is a support and this type of a support are created by projected feature. So whenever you have a separator feature that is to separate a component from the table, what the system will do is it will extract the bottom most contour layer and that contour is used as a sketch to extrude the design for support. So that extruded material will be used as a support or extruded design will be used as a support. So those type of support are called projected support. Another case, uh, you can see a single web support. So here you can see single line. I think you can see the line, right? So instead of uh, depositing a solid material for support, you can also deposit a web-like structure. So. So web, you can see from here. So you don't need to create a support as a solid material, web-like web structure. It is called a, a web-based support material. So this can be a single web, single web in the sense one horizontal line, horizontal uh, deposition and multiple vertical deposition. So this is single web. And you can also go for multiple web. So you can see multiple multiple edges are there. So this is one edge. There's another edge. There's another edge. So these are all vertical edge as like the previous case. But in previous case, we have only one horizontal web. If you look into this case, you, you, you have multiple webs. So this is another example for support. Uh, you have to define uh, which type of support you require. So if you look here in this case, within the web, for example, if you look this region, within the web it is solid material, right? So that can also be printed like connected truss member. So this black color region is a solid material. Though the solid material are printed for minimum thickness at multiple spacing, at multiple uh, distance, within the solid material also you can go for this type of truss design. So this is called a scaffolding uh, support structure. This uh, other than the truss based scaffold, you can also look for some bio inspired or different shapes like hexagon, honeycomb or a gyroid shape you can work on. And one of the most uh, familiarly used uh, design is a honeycomb design. So this is a support material design so uh, design of a support material is also very critical because you have to use a material to withstand the load. At the same time, it should be easily breakable. So you require an optimized design. And these are all some of the example in which you can work on different designs of a support. It has to withstand the load. It should not buckle. But at the same time, it should have less weight, material consumption, and easily removable after printing. So based on all these requirement and machine capability, uh, these are some of the uh, designs available for support. Uh, column support. So column support is uh, if you have a downward facing surface, instead of printing a solid material, you can print like a pillar. In a, a, a construction, we are not going to get a continuous support. If you look into the bridge construction, from one pillar to another pillar, the bridge is laid, right? So below the bridge, we are not having any continuous material. So there is a space. You can use it for some other purpose or you can avoid a material consumption. Similarly, you can erect a pillar like column. So that column, instead of solid material, you can use a pillar like support material. The another important thing is zigzag. So you can see the zigzag pattern. This is what we did saw in our software. So in software, we did saw. We did uh, see the support design, which is a zigzag design. So this is all about different types of support design, which you can uh, uh, work on your uh, additive manufacturing machine. And uh, development of new design based on the constraint as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it has to withstand the load, easily removable, 
consume uh, less material and also it 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 has it should not tend to buckle at the time of printing so based on the constraint lot of uh, designs are uh, proposed and you can also propose or you can take this as one of the part of a research uh, component for design of new support structure yes any questions uh sir uh yes okay hello yeah okay sir uh sir can you like give us some uh, mock quiz or mock test or something so that we can know how to answer questions in cat one maybe after this session uh, i'll give information based on that so okay okay so just i'll show the demo on so could you all able to see the software uh, cura software window yes sir okay so we we did already practice right so just i'll uh, use the same component turbine component later you can all try in your uh, software so same turbine uh, i've got a turbine i have assigned a material support material and part material i'll just tilt it okay I tilted the so could you all be able to see the red color surface in the in the model? Could you all be able to see the red color surface? Yes, sir. So this red color surface or downward facing surface. So this uh, downward facing surface required a support material. now uh, uh, we we have already if, uh, after uh, deciding the orientation you have to give slicing seven grams of material conception so support material is around 3 gram and part material is 4 gram right so we all did discuss this in the previous class so if you click preview you can see both part and support do you are able to see the black color region and orange color region so black is your support and uh, so almost equal uh, conception right so if you print it vertically you can uh, okay now uh, how to define a support design so cura software doesn't support much design but how to define a support requirement just go to this end give edit So if you give edit, uh, there are multiple options available. So one of the option is support. So if you click a downward arrow of support, so it will ask four option: generate a support. Yes, I require a support. If you enable it, uh, disable it, you will, you may not see the sub. You may it, the slicing will not generate a support. I am using second uh, second head nozzle material as a support. Support placement. So this is what I mentioned. So if suppose if you require a support the support is always generated from the table or from everywhere so the two options are available touching a built plate or everywhere so it is always you need a support always from the table that is touching the built plate or from the part itself you can generate it. so i'll 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 give everywhere and uh, instead of everywhere i'll give uh, touching the built plate and here you can mention the overhanging angle so it depends upon your uh, trial and error experimentation i have given abs material as a printing material so using ultimaker you have to print a abs material at different angle for example this might be 45 degree 60 degree 90 degree and you have to see at which angle you doesn't require for example i say uh, until 15 degree so 15 degree is a support overhanging angle then again you do a slicing okay so you can see some gap here right and also you can see the change in material it is totally 6 gram and uh, material previously the support material requirement is 3 gram now the support material is 2 gram so i have given small overhanging angle 
as well as i have changed the support requirement that is instead of everywhere uh, you can see the gap between the build plate so this is a pillar like support so instead of touching entire plate uh, you could able to see the gap between the support so very limited number of options available for support design in uh, cura but you can work on other software where you have a lot of designs you can create your own designs for printing of a part so this is about defining a support for your part so i hope uh, this lecture will help you to identify what are the places you require a support and what are the regions within the support and what are the different uh, designs you can use it for support and pros and cons of each of those designs